Alright, today's lesson we're going to be going over the order of operations, something you're already familiar with, um, so it should go pretty quickly. Um, so what you're familiar with is probably the acronym PEMDAS. P-E-M-D-A-S. The way we were taught to remember it in high school when I was there is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You can see P-E-M-D-A-S. Whatever works for you is fine. Alright, so let's start with the P. P stands for parentheses. Alright, so anytime you see a pair of parentheses, you do whatever is inside those first. Very first. Alright, the E stands for exponents. So anytime something's raised to a power, that's come second. Okay, the M stands for multiplication. And the D stands for division. Multiplication and division are basically the same operation. They're opposites of each other. So these are done at the same time. And the way you tell which one to do first is just like you read a book, left to right. Alright, and last two, addition and subtraction. And those work the exact same way. Alright, so let's take a look at how we're going to use that. Alright, second example in 1-4, we're going to evaluate some algebraic expressions. And when we do this, we're going to have to use our order of operations. Alright, so you see we have an expression over here. And we are told to evaluate it for x and y equaling these two values. So what that's telling me to do is plug in negative 2 every time I see an x and plug in 5 every time I see a y. Okay, whenever you plug in, especially with these negative numbers, negative numbers are special, especially when you're dealing with the exponents, always put parentheses around it. So when I'm plugging it in for x, I'm going to do negative 2 like this with parentheses squared. Then I'm going to multiply times 5. Okay, you notice I didn't put anything in between. You don't put an x, that's for sure, because that looks like a variable. Um, you could put a dot if you want to be explicit, but it's not necessary. This means multiply when you write them next to each other. Minus. Again, I'm going to do parentheses, negative 2, and parentheses, 5, squared, plus 3, parentheses, 5. So every time I plugged in a number, I put it in parentheses. Just good practice to do. All right, now we're going to follow our order of operations. Okay, parentheses are first, but there's nothing really to do inside the parentheses. They're just numbers. So that means E is next exponents, negative 2 squared. All right, I'm going to come over here to the side and do a little note. When you put this in your calculator, if you type in negative 2 squared like that, you're going to get negative 4. This is wrong. Okay, the reason we wrote it this way is because you need to type it in this way in your calculator. Negative 2 squared equals positive 4. This is right. Okay, if you want to make a little note, I will explain in class why this is the way that it is. Okay, if you haven't been explained that before. Alright, so make a little note, ask me tomorrow, and I'll explain why it works that way. Alright, so negative 2 squared is positive 4 times 5 minus negative 2. 5 squared, we do that next, it's also an exponent, is 25 plus 3 times 5. Okay, multiply is next, so we're going to multiply all of these things together. 4 times 5, that's 20. Negative 2 times 25, that's negative 50. And 3 times 5, that's 15. 
This right here, you'll see a double negative. Think of this one as like a negative 1 being multiplied by a negative 50. So that's also a multiplication. And what that does, negative times a negative, is a positive 50. So 20 plus 50 is 70, plus 15 is 85. So this whole thing simplifies down to 85. All right, let's take a look at our next example. All right, our two vocab words we're going to do here are term. So a term is anything that's separated by a plus or a minus sign. So if you take a look down here at this thing, we have three terms currently. Okay, we have term number one separated by this plus sign. Okay, this whole thing right here is a single term because it's inside parentheses and being multiplied. Okay, and then this term is separated by a minus sign. So one, two, three terms right now. Okay, we can do something to change that, which we will, but right now it's just three. All right, and then we have like term. These are any terms of the exact same variables and exponents. Exact same. So if you look over here right now, we have no like terms. These have the same variables, j, k, j, k, but this has a squared, this doesn't. Okay, and these in here don't have j's. Okay, it's kind of outside here. All right, but we're going to do some algebra magic and get this to work. All right, so you learned a couple days ago about the distributive property. We're going to put that into action right now. This j outside the parentheses can be distributed. Okay, the reason we don't do parentheses first is because there's nothing to do. We cannot add these two together. They are not like terms. This is squared. This is not squared. So the first course of action to do is to put this j inside using the distributive property. Now j is not actually going to multiply by anything because it's a different letter than everything else. So I'm just going to write it in alphabetical order. So j comes first right inside there. 6jk squared plus 7jk plus 9jk squared minus 7jk. Okay, I didn't do anything over here, so I just rewrote those, brought them down. All right, now we're looking for like terms. So jk squared. If there's something else that has a jk squared, it's a like term. Okay, the only thing that's allowed to be different is this thing in front. This is called a coefficient. All right, so I'm looking for jk squares. There's one, and here's one. And the way you combine like terms is by adding the coefficient. 6 plus 9 is 15 jk squared. Okay, I see another set of like terms here as well. I have a jk and another jk. This one's positive 7 jk. This one's negative 7 jk. Okay, these two, 7 minus 7, happen to cancel each other out, which means my simplified form is 15jk squared. That will take us to our final example. Got a little word problem here. Okay, Dell Computers is going out of business. They're selling off all of their laptops and desktops for cheap. Okay, we're selling laptops for 500, desktops for 300. We want to write and simplify an expression for the total amount of revenue if they sell 1,000 computers. So the first thing you have to do with these problems is identify what's the variable. All right, now what you can do, we have laptops and desktops, but we don't want two variables, we want a single variable. So we're going to identify laptop. All right, so if we identify laptops as our variable, that means that desktops must equal, and this is important right down here, if they sell 1,000 computers, okay, that's total amount of computers, laptops and desktops combined. Okay, so if they sell L number of laptops, then they sell 1,000 minus L number of desktops. If I sell 700 laptops, I sell 1,000 minus 700, 300 desktops. 
That's how we're going to be able to write an equation in a single variable, by using this. Okay, now we want to write an expression for the total amount of revenue. Revenue means money. How much money did we make? So laptops, that's L. Desktops, that's 1,000 minus L. And they're selling for this much and this much, respectively. So that means 500 times each laptop plus 300 times each desktop is my total amount of revenue. Well, this looks just like that problem we just did. I got some parentheses here and a number out front so I can distribute. 500L plus 300,000 minus 300L. That gives me these two like terms, 500L minus 300L, leaves me with 200L plus 300,000. This formula will give me my total amount of revenue, total amount of money made. That's it.